Sammy, I, I know you've spoken about this anonymously before actually yeah. under a different name but this is a very brave move for you to, to come out so publicly and wave yeah. that right to anonymity why do you feel so strongly that you wanted to do that it was such a big decision and um, but it's something i've been thinking about for a long time and i feel that i'm always kind of hiding from him and he's still controlling me and you know i've sent him to prison that's mm. my time now to just be free and to be able to move forward with my mm. life and i felt like i couldn't do that and for i think nearly four years i've been jessica i've been a campaigner you know i'm, I'm trying my best to do as much as i can and i think as jessica i've took it as far as what i can go mm. as sammy i've got so much more to give did it give you any concern in your community because you still live don't you in Rotherham in, South, do, yeah. in South Yorkshire has it given you any concerns about being trolled or, or people being abusive to you or causing you any problems by coming out like this yeah um, I mean I, I had that anyway as Jessica and everybody in Rotherham kind of knows who I were I mean when it was happening to me it wasn't this little secret that nobody knew about it was so public um, you know not just to myself I weren't the first the last it was happening to so many so there's a lot of people that know who um, I am you, you met Arshid Hussain or Mad Ash as he was known yeah. locally uh, you were just 14 years old yeah he was 24 yeah. so how did you meet and how did that relationship start I was on the local shop with a friend um, and he pulled up in his, his silver Astra and he started talking to my friend and she knew him a little bit anyway and I knew a member of his family so even though I'd not met him personally he didn't feel like a complete stranger mm. to me and of course, as a child, I knew what a paedophile were. It was, um, you know, some fat old man looking out the window at kids on the street or somebody that had pull up in a van, offer you sweets and kidnap you and you'd never see your mum and dad again. He wasn't that description whatsoever. He was 24, he was muscly. Um, I found him really, you know, quite striking. Um, designer clothes, a nice car, he told me involved in property. Um, and I was just so mesmerised by him. And as well, I, I, I like the attention that he gave me. And it's a very different attention to what your parents can give. I mean, I came from a great home and people think this only happens, you know, to bad families. Mm. And that's not true. Mm. It's a different kind of attention. And so it made he, me feel was good he, about he myself. flattering you, telling you you were beautiful, buying yeah. you things? Uh, he told me I was good at everything. I was beautiful. I was funny. I was intelligent. Um, you know, it just made me feel really good about myself. How long did that aspect of him go on before it turned? It kind of turned, I'd say about a month into it, but even when all the violence started, um, which I'm not going to go into it because it, it is quite disturbing mm. to listen to and, um, you know, it were horrific, but I was abused mentally, sexually and physically. Um, but it, it came into about a month and he started being really controlling, really possessive. But even at those times when he were violent, afterwards, it, it's, you know, apologising and say it's only because I love you and you made me do it if you mm. didn't do that. Mm. And I constantly felt like it was always my fault. Mm. And as well, I was never treated as a victim. What mm. about your family at the time? You said you come from a, a good family. Yeah. They must have been very worried about you. They were... Um, my, my parents found out a few days into it, uh, they contacted police. Police said, because I weren't willing to make a statement at that, at that time, there was nothing that they could do. Even though you were yeah. underage? Yeah. I mean, there was one occasion I was actually found in bed half naked with him and I got arrested and he didn't. So that was and a how police raid when yeah. that happened? Um, I, would, I think it was four days after my 15th birthday. But you're, you're, how old are you now? You're, you're in your early 30s. I'm 31, yeah. How young must have you looked at 14? Yeah. I looked a baby. I mean, I was a baby. Uh, I mean, I remember when I told my mum I was pregnant and bless her, she was devastated and she sat crying and she said, my baby can't have a baby, it doesn't make sense. How old but were the... you when you got pregnant? I, I was first pregnant when I was 14 and then again at 15. Oh. So when the police broke in, they didn't... They didn't, they didn't take you into child protection or they weren't... They, it you... was actually my parents that ended up putting me in care. Um, they was trying everything and they thought that was to keep me safe, which backfired. Uh, the authorities said... Is if this because you kept going back to him? Yeah, yeah, I kept going missing. I was missing for days, weeks, months. Mm. Um, I missed on about nine months of my education. So they put me into care and the authorities said if I met him at the top of the street and I was back for ten, that you could have access. So your, your parents thought they were protecting you by doing that? Yeah. But actually, and it made it easier for you to see How him. let yeah. down do you feel by the police and social services? I was badly let down, I was. You know, th there's no sugarcoat in it. But I don't want to spend the rest of my life with blaming and, mm. and living in my past. And for the last four years, I've made sure everybody, I think, on this planet knows about what happened in Rotherham. Mm. 
there comes a time where I just have to let go now. And some people might find this hard to believe, but I do forgive him and other people that did fail. And that's not because I'm justifying what they did. No. It's because I can't keep hanging around yeah, with, you know, that go. anger. Yeah. Yeah. What about your and I want son? To move forward. What about your son? How do you feel when, when you look at your son? Because this man was the father of, of your beautiful son. Yeah. Um, I, rem I, I don't go too much into my son, to be honest, because I do get really emotional with it, but I remember when all this came out, and of course I've had to tell him things, and he got in the car and he said, Mum, am I a rape baby? Aww. And, um... Oh, I'm going to go very short. All right. But you, love, um, but you love him. Yeah, and I said to him, and I got his hand, and I said, no, you're not a rape baby, you're my baby. Mm. And he is. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a body pain at times, but, you know, <laughs> he's a teenager and he's been so supportive of me and I wouldn't be doing what I'd done without my kids. And it's amazing how you you have spoken out and actually it was your testimony against him that, that really got the ball rolling and other victims were coming forward.